Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable lands in the state of New Mexico. New property going live on the website today, guys. This one in a subdivision we have not previously before bought, listed, or sold land in. This, however, is a subdivision I think you guys are really going to like because, as you can see from the headline, no restrictions. So this is, as we like to say, one of these properties that has, quote, no regs, no rules, no HOAs, no dues, which means it opens you up to a lot of possibilities, things that you can't do in other places, most obviously, camping and RVing for indiscriminate periods of time. Less obviously, building structures that you can't get permitted or can't get permitted inexpensively in other parts of the state, such as tiny homes or shipping container homes, etc. So this tends to be the kind of subdivision that our buyers really like, and my guess is you will too. So let's get to the details. This is reference number CBNM-5913, located in northwestern New Mexico in Cibola County, where we've been buying a lot of properties lately. This is 11.32 acres in the High Country Ranch subdivision. And as noted up top, this property is priced at $22,000. So about 2,000 an acre, which is a pretty good price in this region. Uh, let's bring it up on a map, do as we always do, guys. Scroll down here to the table. We've got five GPS coordinates, four corner points in the center. Click any one of them and up on Google Maps, the property shall appear. So first, let's acclimate ourselves. If you know nothing about New Mexico geography, I'm sure you are aware of Albuquerque up here in the north central part of the state. This property sits, if we right click and measure distance, roughly about 100 miles south southwest of Albuquerque out here in Cibola County. Cibola County, as noted, is in western New Mexico. It borders Arizona to its west. And, of course, it sits just west of Albuquerque. It should be noted that 100 miles roughly from Albuquerque is a pretty easy drive. Most of it is along highway here, such as Interstate 40, where you're going to be doing about 75 to 80 miles an hour until you hit roughly about Grants. Uh, then you bang a sharp left, guys, and you're taking the 117 down here to the property. So this is all pretty much highway driving, something you should be able to do pretty quickly. So it might be 100 miles, but it's probably going to be accomplished closer to about, you know, maybe 70 minutes, something like that. Anyway. Uh, should be noted, guys, if you're unfamiliar with Cibola County, this is one of these regions of New Mexico where we like to joke has more cows than people. Ergo, there's, um, as we like to say, a lot to do out here as far as nature, as far as scenery. Some of those highlights include, as we zoom in here on the map, in the 53, we have the El Moro National Monument up here. We have the ice caves at Bandera Volcano. We have the El Mal Pais National Monument and Conservation Area up here. Additionally, there's the Chain of Craters Wilderness Study Area. Uh, if you prefer more water-based recreation, we have the Rama Reservoir located over here, Rama Lake. Additionally, we also have Blue Water Lake State Park up here. Both of these, of course, ideal for um, boating, fishing, jet skiing, so on and so forth. And, of course, this giant splotch of green that we have on the map as we pull back. It's 300,000 acres of Cibola National Forest where you can hunt, where you can picnic, where you can camp and do trails and whatnot, uh, etc. But this, of course, is an ideal area for hunting, particularly if you're looking for or rather, I believe there's a lot of elk, mule deer, and wild turkey, uh, as we like to note, in Cibola County. Uh, that, of course, includes the subject property down here, which, as noted, is about 11 acres. So you're going to be able to hunt on that as well, uh, etc. It should be noted that this property down here is pretty close to Tecato. Tecato and Fence Lake are two kind of small towns where you're, you might be able to get some groceries, you might be able to get supplies, but larger grocery and supply runs, particularly if you're building out here, particularly if you need building supplies, particularly if you're going to be out here for a month at a time and you want to do like a major grocery run, that's going to be up here in the county seat of Grants. Grants, of course, is roughly about an hour north north east uh, along the 117. Of course, Grants is not only the county seat, but is also sort of the population center of Cibola County. As we zoom in here on the map, you can see that there's a dense concentration of people living out here. Uh, additionally, you have things out here like the Walmart Superstore is out here, Walmart Supercenter, excuse me. Uh, Grants Milan Municipal Airport, the Cibola Hospital is out here, uh, etc. As well as pretty much every fast food restaurant in America has some sort of outpost out here. Domino's, uh, McDonald's, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's other ones. Domino's and McDonald's are the ones that jumped out at me, guys. Anyway, all right. Going now to the subject property. Located down here, High Country Ranch is the name of the subdivision. Uh, it occupies roughly about this area out here. Uh, and as we zoom in on the property, you will see 
property is sort of a cul-de-sac a lot. It sits, this is not really identifiable here on the map, but this is Pinion Road. It sits at the end of Pinion Road, and it's a property that occupies roughly about this amount of area like this. Pinion, by the way, connects to uh, High Country Road, which in turn links down here to the 117. So the property's got pretty good access right off the 117, uh, which I will show you in just a bit. Uh, it should be noted because there is no plat overlay here on Google Maps. I'm going to direct your attention back to the listing page. We're down here. We not only have the Google Earth representation of the property and its exact sort of footprint, uh, you will note, guys, that this is the pinion road that leads into the property. So not a lot of road frontage here at the property. It's a you know large property that just sort of sits right here off this cul-de-sac, but that is the road access right there. Additionally, guys, we also have the plat map right here, which will sort of reiterate this and give you a better sense of what I'm talking about. This is pinion right here, and this, of course, is the subject property. Lot 50, 11.3 acres. Uh, back to the map. So a couple things. Number one, if we zoom in here on Pinion Road, you are going to be able to see a uh, power pole that sits down right here. This, I believe, is the one closest to the subject property. Uh, additionally, you have neighbors over here, over here, and over here, all of whom are apparently living out this way. You will notice, guys, that there is power all along this road, along High Country Road, um, servicing this entire subdivision. Additionally, we are told, though we can't confirm this, that there is underground utilities in this region. One of the neighbors, uh, of course, uh, bumped into our photographer while he was out there, and he confirmed that there are underground utilities, but he said they're, quote, very well concealed. I don't know why they're so well concealed, but the point is our photographer could not find them. Now, based on the assessment values of the land in this region, I'm going to guess they have underground utilities. And actually, I kind of scanned the map. I took a little guy right here, and I put him down here on some of these roads, and I looked around, and I see underground utilities in this region. So I imagine they're out there, but this is one of these buyer beware. You're going to have to confirm this one on your own type of thing. So if you do end up going out there to scout the property, that's something you should keep in mind to look for. Whatever the case, power at the lot line, supposedly underground utilities, so on and so forth. But the fact that you've got people living right next door to you on these neighboring properties is a good sign. Uh, it suggests that at the very least it's not going to be difficult to get hooked up to the grid uh, or to get power and utilities out there. Now, back to the uh, photo gallery, guys, just want to show you here. So this is the 117 coming in here. This is High Country Road, as you will see in the next still, High Country Road, there it is. And High Country, of course, leads here to Pinion Road. As you can see, these are both uh, well-maintained roads. Pinion becomes kind of dirt gravel, but obviously easy to navigate, easy to drive on. Uh, any type of vehicle is going to be able to get up there into the property. Uh, we've got some property boundary markers for some of the, for the lot that's down here on the corner. I will point these out more as we go on. One thing that I wanted to note, guys, and as we just kind of come back here to the uh, satellite view, one thing that my photographer pointed out is, of course, you've got the forested area of the land right here. You've also got the cutout area of the land, the open space. So depending on what you want to do with this, where you want to build, I, I don't know. But one thing that he did point out is that you come in here at the end of the cul-de-sac, it's not an easy drive into here. This is something that if you're going to end up building out here, you're going to be driving back and forth to you know haul materials or whatever, you're going to have to cut down some trees to get back and forth. There's not an easy path through this, so just an FYI. Uh, whatever the case, guys, as we continue through the photo gallery here, you will see, amongst other things, number one, this is where the cul-de-sac ends and the lot begins. You can also see some boundary markers here, which I believe we're going to see in the next still. Yes, there it is. So the entire subdivision was staked, and they weren't staked with these little ticky-tack stakes that you can't find decades later. These things pronounce themselves. They, they announce themselves. They jump out of the ground at you. So it's going to be very easy to find your boundaries out there. This, of course, is a benefit for the buyer um, because you're not going to have to get the land surveyed. I don't know what an 11-acre lot that is this shape costs to get surveyed these days, but I'd say it's, it's fair to start at about 2,000 and go up from there. So that's gonna be a savings to the buyer. Uh, additionally, as noted, this is lot 50. There's however many lots in the subdivision, say 120, this is the 50th one, and it's got its own little convenient boundary marker, convenient property marker right there. Anyway, uh, as we go through these, of course, you're gonna get a sense not only of the forested areas, but of this open, uh, this wide open space out here, which you can build on. Um, of course, you can build wherever you like, but these flat areas are a lot easier to do it in. Uh, not a lot of excavating, not a lot of uh, 
landscaping. I don't know. The point is you're not going to have to knock down a bunch of trees. You're not going to have to dig up a bunch of rocks, things like that. It's a nice flat area where you could build or park whatever it is that you want to put out there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the zoning. Typically, I wait till I'm done with the photos, but we're going to go through these slowly while I talk about this. Oh, additionally, guys, western uh, fence along the western part of the property. This, of course, is fence uh, shared with the neighboring lot. Uh, this, of course, is a benefit because if they've got animals, they're not coming into your yard. If you've got animals, you don't have to worry at least about getting fencing made for the western portion of the property. Additionally, it kind of dictates your boundaries or reiterates exactly where the property line is. So that, too, uh, is another thing that you won't have to hire a surveyor to tell you. Anyway, so in regards to zoning, Cibola County is one of these counties that uh, does not have formal zoning ordinance, particularly in regions like this, which is to say rural regions. This is more of the fencing. Uh, they tend to defer to covenants and restrictions of various subdivisions. They tend to defer to whatever property, home, or landowners associations are in place. Fortunately for you, the buyer, uh, there are no covenants and restrictions. There are no property, land, or homeowner associations out here, uh, which means not only that no one is making up uh, ticky-tack rules and leveling idiot fines at you throughout the year for whatever they can come up with, just coming up with ways to collect money from you, uh, but rather, it also means that you're going to have a degree of freedom and independence on the property to do uh, as you see fit, to build what you like, to park what you like, uh, to camp for however long you like, so on and so forth. And now, I'll direct your attention to the quote-unquote covenants and restrictions that exist out here in just a bit as we go through the gallery. Uh, but I do want to finish off by pointing out here some more of the property boundary markers that are out here and, of course, some really nice uh, mountain views out here as well. Like most of Cibola County, this is a really nice rural region with a lot of really pretty scenery. And here's more of that fencing, guys, FYI. Uh, additionally, as we go through these, we've got the money shots right here. And then we've got the drone shots, which give you a good indication of the cutout area of the property, uh, as well as just how kind of pretty and picturesque this region is. I will let you guys know that we're going to have a drone video posted down here at the bottom of the page between the gallery and the price. So take a look at that. It'll give you even a better sense of the property terrain, surroundings, etc. Back to the zoning for just a second. So as we noted, guys, no formal zoning designation here in Cibola County. One thing I do want to direct your attention to is this PDF. These are the official sort of covenants and restrictions that were created with the land at the time. Now, this is a this is a big document by a uh, developer who comes in and creates a subdivision and uh, their attorneys who enjoy their billable hours. So they write uh, this very lengthy document. And in it, Articles 1, Articles 2, Article 4 down here, not much of this really pertains to you. The one thing I do want to direct your attention to is Article 3, Restrictions. Now, so I keep saying there's no restrictions, no restrictions. I'm rounding off conversationally. There is one restriction, which apparently is you can't subdivide the lot. Now, I'm, I'm saying zero restrictions because most buyers who I encounter don't really care about subdividing. They're not looking to subdivide parcels. That being said, if you are, this may not be the property for you. Uh, that said, I also point this out because when I first looked at this, I thought, did we miss a page? Is there a page of missing restrictions? What is this? How is there only one restriction? But no, turns out there's only one restriction and uh, it's not really that big of a deal. You know, usually when you see developers who write stuff like this, they will at least write things like, you know, no setting off fireworks on the property because you're surrounded by trees, things like that, or don't leave trash on the property. They'll at least usually have this kind of ticky-tack you know, common sense, good neighbor type covenants. Nope, not high country. So FYI, guys, a lot of freedom out here to do as you see fit. Now, it should be noted, guys, I just want to direct your attention to some links that we have down here under county contact information. Uh, this can always help with research. Continental Divide Electric Co-op is the electric company that tends to service most of Cibola County. I believe they service out here. Uh, whatever the case, you can click on this. It takes you to their website. You can reach out to them and talk to them about you know, hey, I'm looking to buy some property. You guys have got some power at the lot line. Um, you know, it's an 11-acre parcel. Realistically, if I build, you know, three acres in and I have to get power poles extended, what does that cost me? Practically speaking, what should I be aware of? Additionally, should you find yourself out there uh, looking for underground utilities, and they do exist, uh, underground telecom company um, you may also want to reach out to them. Whatever the case, uh, offices, the New Mexico State Engineer are, is the government entity that controls water rights in the state, controls things like wells, well permits. Uh, this is the organization that you're going to reach out to to talk about getting permitted for, uh, for a well out there. Uh, now, it should be noted, these home sites that we see here, I'm, I'm working off the assumption these people have wells. Typically, when you see a home like this in the middle of 
essentially nowhere like this. They usually have a working well on the property. Uh, and I would assume that's the case with these other home sites that you have out here with this, this, etc. cetera. Um, also, here's a really nice one up here located fairly close to the subject property. Uh, generally, when I see this many homes in close proximity to one another, uh, it suggests in a rural region like this, it suggests to me that the water table is fairly accessible, not too expensive to tap into. That being said, I do not know a lot about that topic. So I always encourage my buyers, if you're going to buy a property like this, if you're going to drop $22,000 with me or anybody else, this is something you should investigate in advance. So the Office of the State Engineer is a good resource for this. They generally have uh, well logs on here that give you a sense of uh, water table depth or how far wells were drilled in the region. That being said, I don't like to rely on those. I don't like to quote those on the website because it's never a hard and fast rule of like definitely 50 feet. So I don't like to throw it out there. Uh, also, it is generally best to speak to vendors, people who drill wells professionally, to talk to them about, you know, those people know these regions intimately. And you can say High Country Ranch, and they probably know the subdivision. And you can say it's down by Fence Lake. What's the water table like out there? And they're going to say it's anywhere between X and Y feet and it's going to cost you A and B dollars. So that is a good resource for research on these things. Anyway, guys, should be noted that we closed on this property with Quest Title as we do with all our expensive properties out there in Cibola County. This means, of course, we have title insurance on the property. This also means we'll be providing a warranty deed. And if you would like to purchase this property, come up here, click the Buy Now button. It's going to take you to Secure Checkout page, guys. So we start off with a $500 non-refundable earnest money deposit guys let me say this again non-refundable earnest money deposit non-refundable okay uh this is 500 dollars to get the ball rolling uh we expect you to have all 22,000, but we start with 500 because we do not anticipate nor would we ask you to charge twenty-two thousand dollars on a credit card this is something we're going to encourage you to close through a title company we encourage you for a couple reasons number one you probably want title insurance even if you don't know that you want it you probably want it number one Number two, it's good to put a third-party intermediary in between uh, buyer and seller uh, just to make sure that all the I's get uh, dotted, all the T's get crossed, and that your money is not conveyed to us until the property has been deeded into your name. This is one of the benefits of a title company. So we ask you for $500 to start this process off. You fill out some information here, legal name for deed, tax address, where Cibola County going to send their roughly $150 bill each year for taxes. Agree to the terms of service, and on the next page, you are going to enter credit or debit card information to put down that non-refundable $500 earnest money deposit. Now, the way this process works, guys, if you would like to see this enumerated, if I go too fast in this video and you would like to read over this, come to our How It Works Buy and From Us page. It's going to take you here. It's going to enumerate the two different processes by which we convey property. This one for prices over $10,000, like this property, is what we recommend. You put down the earnest money deposit. We're going to send you a contract. You sign it, we sign it, we submit it to title, and title does the rest, usually slowly, over the course of about a month, okay? But at the end of that month, they come back to you, they say, okay, give us the rest of the money. They come to us, they say, okay, sign the deed, and then they release your money to us only once the deed has been recorded, so just an FYI. Uh, and if you'd like to see a copy of what one of our contracts looks like, uh, so you know what you're signing in advance, Click this link right here. It's going to bring up a generic version of one of our standard contracts. These, of course, guys, are very easy to read. These are very self-explanatory. If you want to get your lawyer to read this for you, I'm sure they won't mind charging you for that. But the point is you got one page, one page for signatures. This is going to enumerate all the terms of the agreement, um, etc. So title companies don't do anything until they have a contract from buyer and seller demonstrating intent. And we do not draft one of these until such time as we have the earnest money deposit, the non-refundable earnest money deposit. Anyway, guys, so this is a really nice property. I really like this one. It's got a lot of nice features. Generally speaking, when we write headlines this long, you know it's got a lot of nice features, uh, et cetera. So if you have any questions, leave us a comment on the YouTube. Shoot us a call, 702-919-7170, or give us an email at support at Hemingwayland.com. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.